In today's consumer age, we're led to believe that we need every single bit of gear just in case. This lens for that purpose, that lens for this purpose, that's a tongue twister. But generally speaking, we'll end up buying a bunch of lenses and gear for a rainy day. But most of the time, that stuff will just end up sitting on the shelf gathering dust. Now this is true for all of us, however it's especially true for anyone who's just starting out. So in this video I will cover the gear that I think you will need if you're just starting out. And honestly I would say for 95% of people this gear will cover all of their needs. Also this video is slightly tailored towards street and travel photography, however I think it can be applied all across the board. This is a fairly obvious one, but honestly, your camera doesn't really matter as long as you enjoy using it. If you love using your iPhone over a Canon R3, then the iPhone is a better camera for you. The brand doesn't really matter anymore because all the mainstream brands like Fuji, Canon, Sony, I forgot the rest, but they're all about the same. You know, there's no such thing as a bad camera these days. I would suggest a few things though. The first one is to get a camera that you can grow into. You know the saying, if you buy cheap, you buy twice. Secondly, get a camera where you can change lenses. Now, fixed lens cameras are fantastic, but if you're just starting out, I do think being able to change lenses will benefit you. And finally, don't blow your entire budget on the camera just because the man who works in the camera shop tells you you need 50 megapixels because you don't. At the end of the day, if you're just blown five grand on the camera and all you can do is sit at home and take photos of your toes, and you can't even travel anywhere because you've got no money, then it's kind of pointless, isn't it? There is no simple answer. There's always going to be a trade-off. So do your research, try different cameras, and just buy the one that you like. The first lens I would suggest is a 24 to 70 or a standard zoom lens. So in the Fujifilm world, we're looking at the 18 to 55, 16 to 80, and the 16 to 55, if you can stretch to that. Now, a lot of these lenses will come bundled in as a kit lens when you buy your camera, and I do highly recommend going down that route if you're just starting out for two reasons. Number one, the kit lens is more than good enough in most cases. As a matter of fact, the Fuji 18 to 55 kit lens shouldn't even be a kit lens because it's that good. But also you save a lot of money because in many cases, the, the extra cost of the kit lens as a kit is like half the price of what that lens would be on its own. So even if you don't like it, you can sell it and more than make your money back. The reason I say to go for this particular lens is because it's a jack of all trades. You can do wide angle architecture, you can do 35 or 50 mil street photography, and then you can punch in to 70 mil to get subjects which are far away. Another good thing about this lens is if you're in a particular environment where let's say there's loads of moisture, rain or dust, you don't want to be changing lenses all the time. Obviously, if you have the luxury of having two camera bodies with two primes, fine, but chances are most people don't. So having a zoom lens just means you're not exposing your sensor to any moisture or dust if you're always changing lenses. Another good one with the zoom lens is if you're heading into a location that you've never been before and you don't know what to expect, I would rather take a zoom than a prime. Certainly if I only have one shot, pun not intended, at being in that location because then you're pretty much covered for everything. And finally, if you physically can't move around yourself, then having a zoom lens will be very beneficial because you can then change your composition based on just the lens rather than moving around. The next lens I would get will either be a 50 or a 35 mil prime. Now, which one would you select? Well, that depends on how you use your zoom lens. If you tend to shoot at 50 mil or above, or you prefer tighter shots, then maybe a 50 mil prime will be better for you. However, if you prefer wider shots, then a 35 will probably do a better job. Having a small fast prime has so many benefits. First and foremost, it allows you to shoot in low light and having your ISO a bit lower, thus having cleaner images. If you wanna do portraiture, then most primes are faster than zooms, so you'll have a bit more background blur as well. But most importantly, a prime lens will allow you to just move around the scene a lot more. It will allow you to focus on the scene and focus on your compositions because you can't simply stand in one place and zoom in and out. In my personal opinion, a prime lens is the quickest way to improve with, when it comes to your compositions and just with photography in general. And in some city environments, having a smaller, lighter prime will just be a bit more inconspicuous compared to a larger zoom lens. And the final advantage of having a prime is the fact that you don't need to zoom in and out, which is one less thing for you to think about and one less thing for you to do. So if you're somewhere that's very fast paced, 
then being able to just take photos without trying to think what focal length to go with will definitely uh, be a benefit. At this point, I wanna say a huge thank you to today's video sponsor, which is myself. As you might know, I am soon leaving the UK and I'm just gonna go back, back around for a bit, which means I am getting rid of a bunch of stuff. As I was clearing out my house, I found a bunch of old prints that I used to have for sale like a year ago. I thought I sold them, but then I didn't and I found them under my bed. So they're all ready to go. Um, so if you do want to get a limited edition print that I don't think I'll ever print again, then uh, use the link down below. Not many left, so go and grab them and thank you for the support. There are many ways to carry your camera, either a crossbody or a neck strap, a wrist strap, or even those peak design clips which go on your bag. They all have their respective benefits and uh, drawbacks. However, in my experience, having used all three of them, I found a traditional basic wrist strap to be the best. The main reason for it is because the camera stays in your hand and you're always ready to take a photo. Every time my camera was either on the clip or on a crossbody strap, it was an extra effort to get the camera, switch it on, da, da 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 Also, it's a little bit more secure because if the camera is just here or on a strap and you're not paying attention to it, it's easy for someone to take the opportunity and try and grab it from you. However, if you're holding it in your hand as well as having the wrist strap, then there's just an extra layer of security that the thief will have to go through before getting the camera. Therefore, it'll probably deter them. Now that the camera stuff is sorted, we need a way to carry all that camera gear. So the two things I would suggest at this point is either a crossbody sling or a camera cube that you can use with your own bag that you already own. Personally, I wouldn't go down a dedicated camera bag route just yet because you just don't have enough gear to warrant the expense. However, if you insist on getting one from personal experience, I would suggest the Peak Design Zip, but the smaller 15 liter one. As for the sling, it can be any sling. I've tried Bellroy slings, Peak Design slings. I've gone back and forth. Personally, I've now gone back to the Peak Design sling. In terms of camera cubes, it doesn't really matter which ones you have. I currently have a bunch of f-stop camera cubes, but honestly, they all do the same job. The only problem with that is it can be a bit of a faff to get into your bag, to then take the cube out, to open the cube. So yeah, I don't think there's a perfect solution to it, but at least initially, a camera cube for your own bag or a sling will be the best way to go about it, especially if you're buying a smaller system like Micro Four Thirds or APS-C. Once you've taken your photos, it's either time to edit them or to back them up if they're just JPEGs. Now, there's many ways of doing it. Personally, I prefer the iPad. Now, it doesn't have to be an iPad Pro from with the latest M1 chip or anything like that. Even an iPad Air will do the job as long as you can have a pencil attached to it. The main reason I use an iPad over other devices is because it's a better user experience. Being able to hold the photo in your hand, to zoom in, to use the pen to touch things up and to just do all the sliders with your fingers seems a lot more of an intuitive and natural process compared to sitting in front of a screen or on a laptop. Along with your iPad, I'll probably get like a dongle so you can plug things in, an external hard drive, like a four terabyte one that will last you for ages, and some kind of a cloud photo backup, such as Amazon or Apple or Google Photos. It doesn't really matter. Obviously, iPad is not the only way. I know people who have dedicated editing stations with 32 inch monitors, and I know people who edit on their phone. There is no right or wrong. However, if you're still using Android or Windows devices, then my heart does go out to you, and I certainly hope that your situation improves soon. And the final key bit of gear, which in my opinion is probably the most important bit of gear, which is a good pair of trainers. If you're rolling your eyes by now, you won't be when you have blisters because street photography, travel photography, any type of photography that's outside of a studio involves a lot of walking. When I do my street photo walks in London, I can easily cover between 10 and 15 miles in the summer and over 20 miles in no, the other way around, 10, 15 miles in the winter when there's not enough light and over 20 miles in the summer. And if you have crap footwear, you'll have blisters, you'll have ankle pain, and you're just gonna have a crap time. So get yourself some good running trainers, walking boots, whatever it is, and honestly, that will pay dividends in the future. All right, that's everything for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. This has been a bit more of a simple video, however, an important video to hopefully remove the gas gear acquisition acquisi gear acquisition syndrome which has been going around lately with all these new lenses and bits and bobs coming out but yeah i'm waffling so hope you enjoyed it hope you're having a good day a good week and i'll see you in the next video bye